Welcome to my shop. This is Jim, Saw Logs Plastic Hubs. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, we're working on a project. Come along, have fun. Folks, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to be a carpenter. I will, it will tell you, with all honesty, I'm not much of a carpenter. What I have here is a shelf. Uh, we went yard sale on Saturday. Chris and I did. And walked up on this place. She's, uh, our, our grandchildren are coming in for the summer. Um, and Chris is so gracious to allow me to be a grandfather but that's something that's really special to me and so what I'm doing is taking this square and just squaring this up because I want all this as square as possible it may not be get perfectly square because some of this other cuts might not be square but this is a piece of plywood I've taken out of something. The shelf, the blue shelf you see, it basically, we zoom in at the yard sale. What I'm doing with this piece of plywood is making a back for it. Not because I need the back, but because I need a place to mount to my wall cause my walls and studs, the shelf will not fit where I want to fit it. So now that I've kind of got it marked off, I'm going to go back and I'll get me a skill saw out and we'll just sort of set this thing up and saw it and so give me a few minutes to get my tools together. Now I'm going to saw this up. I'm always careful with my hand tools and stuff. This particular saw that I have, it's over 40 years old. Uh, my dad, let me turn it around here because we know I want to saw it this way. My dad bought the saw actually for me back in the day when we was making fishing lures. I will say today, and this is more of a little different take on my normal videos. Uh, I'm going to say this. Uh, my normal, in case you're wondering, part of the reason the channel changed and some Back when we made fishing plugs, the plugs were saw. Uh, we made fishing plugs, and the fishing plugs was actually made out, out of wood to pull ice flies off behind it to attract the fish. The, plug, the wooden plug actually had no hooks in it. We called them saw logs. I made a lot of them with the wood lathe. Uh, the wood lathe still in old building up Kings Mountain, by the way. Dad bought this saw because we needed stock. Cheap stocks, pick a two befores up, rip them in half. So that's why where the saw come from. Okay, now uh, I'm finishing up with this today. This is a. So I was going to say, when you if you have a shop of your own and want something for a storage project or something. And your and wife, or whatever goes to yard sale, trail around after it. Uh, because 
you can find sometimes the deal. And this one, like I said, this little old shelf is quite off. You go to an unfinished wood store, craft store, something like that, uh, you pick up one of these shelves, you probably look at $30, $40. Anywhere from $25 to $40. Depending upon your country. So, there we go. And we got a back on it. Now, I'm not going to paint this thing, by the way. It's in my shop. If you so desired, you could paint this sucker up. Now I'm going to go over here and lay out my wall and get that figured out, marked up so I know where I'm at. I've got marks to the center here where I can see them. And probably what I'll do is transfer me a blue mark up here where I can see this. So, okay. Now what I've done is to make my life easier so I wouldn't have to be struggling on camera. Let me look see, excuse me, where we're at. Is not to get my camera struggling on camera finding the spot. Basically, what I did is I marked my studs, centered this up, then all I'm going to do is just group this around where it's level. That's pretty darn close. And then we're going to run more screws in. So that's why the pre drill was for. We'll just take a screw, put it in right here, pull that sucker right up to the wall. What that does is give us a good strong amount. I've got some longer screws here, and we're going to use them. We're going to suck this sucker up in the wall real good. We're going to put tools on it. I just add. I wish I had a little intermediate lift screw, but this one. Will... Maybe not. Wood might have some battery issues. Let me get yourself back here. Let's let the camera set there a second. I'll change the battery. That might not be my better plan right there. One thing, folks, about NICAD when they die, they die. This and here, this little screwdriver doesn't have a lot of amperage to it, and we'll try. I want to suck that screw up in there so. I got that that's in there. One long screw like that will make a big difference. I'd like to have uh, intermediate length screws. I just don't have them handy. So I got, I'll have to put these two of these inch and a quarter in and two long ones and now into the stud or to hold that good enough. Alright, now what I'm going to do is put my tools up there and I'm done with that job today. So that's just one of them little quickies uh, shop organization. So point, guys, you can go to yard sales and find stuff. And you'll see here in a minute what I'm going to do with it. Let me kind of zoom in see so you can see what I did. Zoom in a little better. I'll move up here. It looks a little darkish here. There we go. That's the top shelf. Let me back up a little. You can get a good, maybe I'll move back a step. There we go. Now that's sort of what I want to do with that. So my total investment is a piece of plywood I had here and five bucks. And now I have an extra shelf here in the shop right behind my lathe for my other turning tools. Um, if you haven't seen my video about modifying large shape turning tools for the lathe, 
And right here, you you see I've got a good menu. There's a lot of these in the top shelf outside this one threading tool that I don't use that often. These other ones are actually, again, CNC tools that I've milled, put dovetails in to use in my BXA block. So let me pull you back and show you how I got my setup. And I may move some other stuff. And I just, you know, may take everything off top of my lathe now. And kind of pull you back and get you, take some of the zoom out, pull you back, get the whole lathe in the pacer. And I may take, come to think of it, I'd like to get my oil or I may move this again. So just hold on a minute. Off camera, I've done another organizational project this morning. Uh, what you see sitting, I, and I'm going to leave these on the lathe. And part of the reason for cleaning them off, because the drills are so tall, I don't think it fit in the shelves there. I'm, I'd have to look and see. I'm, I might still put them back here, but the, the issue there is that's, that'd be a little bit, you know. So these are all my reduced shank drills that I have. Uh, I basically, another one of these aluminum blocks that you've seen me have, and I just machined that aluminum block down to, to or just, you know, drill a series of holes in it to mount my drills to, made me a drill organizer out of it. So these are all the ones that some of them's factory made, some of them was shot and turned down. Uh, these are the ones I drilled down for myself, and basically this is what it is. Most of these drills I didn't cut the shanks down. Like 90% of them I didn't cut the shanks down. They come, come, I inherited them that way. So it is what it is, and I just got a text from my sweetheart thanking me for putting her lunch together. So we're going to take these drills and we're going to set them right back here at the back of the lathe where I can get to them out of the way. And so there they are. And that's all my larger ones. So I have them set there, organized, put together, and all that. So that's another one of my little projects today. Some of them's not going to lay good because I drilled all the holes to basically a half inch. And some of these drills like these have been turned down won't ride. So that's my other project for the day, a little block, organized my drills. I'm going to sweep up, go grab a bite to eat, and go see my mom. Have a great day. Okay, I'm going to call that a success. That's kind of what I kind of was looking for. And I kind of pulled back on the lathe here. And let me see if I got to get the whole most of the lathe in focus here. And let me move back here. I kind of got in touch with my feminine side. Uh, no, trust me, I'm not making fun of ladies. They, uh, Chris is the most greatest woman in the world. And I will tell you, when we decorate or something, she's easy. So here we go. So here's basically, I'm going to kind of do a little walkthrough, mini tour of my lathe and what I've done, why I've done it, and all that stuff. Let me walk back around here and check my viewfinder because I'm really bad to put getting stuff out of view. And I'm going to go from right to left and how I've got my lathe organized. This is a GO750G gunsmithing lathe. This is what I use. Uh, originally, if you see most grizzlies, they have a panel in this area right here. Well, my particular grizzly had that panel. And when we installed the lathe originally in Kings Mountain at the other building, we had a little accident. Basically, I was trying to do it by myself, and it got overbalanced, and it actually landed on the panel and bent it. So the panel was useless. So we rebuilt the lathe and reinstalled, reinstalled the lathe. What we did is this friend of mine come help me, and we put it together. Because my lathe sets on wood, and it, it grizzly says to bolt these things. The way the bolts are in these panels underneath, very difficult. What I did is I've got a piece, of, this is actually bed rail, welded to the base of my lathe running back. It's on a wooden floor. Everything's level fairly. I mean, it's not precision leveled, and I will tell you that, but Everything's good and solid base. It won't twist the bed. My lathe has got about a thousandths over six, eight inches. I'm not going to tweak with that. So my lathe's bolted. 
These cabinets that you've seen me work on before underneath the green ones, these came, I had them basically. Some of them come from auctions, some come from the same ones on my workbench. And I did, they're just sitting on boards underneath to set there to put for more storage. I made this shelf, you've seen this on a video somewhere along the way. Now, what I keep is my four jaw chuck, my collet chuck that's made VR32, and this stuff. The actual inside plate that this sets on is the Grizzly plate. So you move up one level. What I've done with my lathe is I like to have my stuff handy. I actually got two files on the lathe. These are nothing but eye bolts, and this was originally drilled into the machine and bolted. Well, this kept working loose, so I cut my wire welder and tacked all these on. So this is tacked, and this is tacked, and this is tacked. Over here is tacked. These are files. You've seen the last video where I made this plate for my D-Bird. And over here in the end is another one of these that I welded for an airline that I used both on the mill and the lathe. Then, if you'll notice the top of my lathe here, there's these tools are mounted, and basically what I've done is these are quarter bolts drilled with nut certs into the into the top sheet metal. These are my most commonly used tools. These are the ones I use, you know, fairly regular. Basically, my turning my my pretty much go-to turning tool that you see is this MCLNR 164D with a for a uh, CNMG 432 that I've modified it to fit straight to the block. Cut off tool, chamfer tool, again it's just a standard lathe tool, uh, Boeing bar, I mean, uh, John, John uh, Double Boost type and some other guys make these rollers up. Uh, a turning tool like you see a lot of the guys use, I hardly use it that much. Uh, a couple of Boeing bars up here. Uh, this one here is on my new blocks that I made, video series on that, if you want to go back and see it. I bought this on eBay many years ago. Somebody took a turn to cut it way down. It's real good for getting in tiny holes. This morning bar I picked up at flea market. Really good morning bar. And that's what, and so sometimes these morning bars you need to mount them back and forth. Over here is another small morning bar. Knock the tool off. Uh, excuse me. This is a, a DNMG tool that's mounted back here. Right back here is on another set of posts. This is that live center and another chuck. Uh, this is the chuck that actually comes with these machines, uh, a key chuck. And I thought about, and I really entertained the thoughts of taking this chuck here put my center drill in it and leave it. Or maybe use it for tapping sometimes and I really want to do it more often. Uh, right back here, hanging on the stove, is a, a little plate that fits here that I can use an indicator for a DRO when needed. Uh, I keep a couple of magnets on the machine for center drills. That's something else that I'm studying on making better. Uh, this is my extended handle and you've seen that in a video. And um, then back here are these studs, just other things that you need. Uh, my ER32 collet wrench is hung up there. Brush, shovel for chips. My 14 millimeter wrench that I modified to change the uh, angle on the uh, compound angle uh, when needed. Brush, again to clean with. Then a wrench to adjust this as needed. And you've heard me talk about I don't move this, you don't see it very often. Most of the time when I'm cutting angles or tapers, I realign this. Most of the time this thing stays where it's at. You know my philosophy on that, so I ain't going to there. An indicator on a magnet which stays right here, one of the little Shars deals. So that's it. So now, after the cleanup, I've got everything off the top of the lathe. I've got only thing sitting on my lathe right now is my Spillmaster cutting oil. The one you see up there is my aluminum one. It's got a little bit of uh, diesel fuel WD-40 and just a tick of cutting oil in it. My little indicator that I use for certain things. Then I've got 
Uh, the little pump can has got WD-40. The other can has got whale oil in it because it works with the buttons. And then I keep, I'm going to keep this one here down here because it won't fit the shelf. It's cutting oil for drilling holes. So that's kind of where I'm going to work from on my lathe. Uh, I've got all this storage down here. Not all of it's used. The red box down at the bottom is the gears. Plan on just leaving them in there like that. So today, this is what I have here. This is my setup. And on my mill, I got the screws. I need to move some stuff. Basically on the mill, I keep uh, my cutting oils and stuff. And that oil can, again, it's way oil for the button oilers. So I can just have it right there in the mill. And uh, I need to pick the tools up, obviously, from what I've worked today. And I'm gonna, I'll am i probably look at lining up starting another project. Maybe not today, but just getting ready. I hope you enjoyed this side view or side trip from the normal machining. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to remind you about this. This is a... This was right here, this deal right here, five bucks, yard sale. So if you got need a storage shelf of some kind, hey, troll along with your madam to the yard sale. You may come across a really good little deal like this, and you get you a, you know, you can have you some storage for fairly inexpensive. I mean, right there, that's a dead place on my wall. I can't really get behind my lathe that well. There's Right there is some shelving. I've got two and got my lathe cleaned up. Looks a little bit better. I admit I don't wipe the lathe off. I clean the important parts. Back there where it's going to get chips thrown on it and chips out of the pan. I just keep them clean. I don't, my lathe is a tool and I don't clean it up. So guys, I want you to enjoy this video. You may even see me use this. I may be able, this is something else I just seen. This clip camera mount will pop right here. So that'll give me another option for some video views for you. Uh, this is a handy little tool right here. You may see it used too. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit of a different one for me in machining. I know you've seen me when I worked on inside the shop doing a little insulation. And I hope you enjoy this. A little deviation from machining. But it's shop maintenance. It's things we need to do. Uh, and like I said, Saturday, we was out of the yard selling, and I just seen that shelf laying there, and I walked my, my, Chris bought a stroller for the grandkids to use while they're here. So heck, $5 shelf, and look what it's done for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you've enjoyed your visit to my shop here. This is Jim, and you always enjoy the videos. Please comment, rate, and subscribe because that keeps me going. Uh, I always try to keep something interesting. So, again, I appreciate all my subscribers, especially the newer ones who just signed on. We're trying to build this channel, just, you know, show a person out in the shop having fun. Again, Appreciate you watching. Appreciate the comments. Also, share with your friends that you have. You know, you got friends that's interested in such videos. Hey, tell them about me and have them come by and pay a visit. So you have a great day, and we'll see you when next time I decide to make one of these things.